A question. Can you help me understand how my particular situation differs from one where I'm trying to have a fixed belief validated? Right now, I'm aware of my false self's beliefs. I'm actively pursuing fixed beliefs in my mind in general. Can you offer me some examples of the differences in situations where I'm feeling unity with others who have had similar experiences as opposed to seeking to stay in immersion through validation. So as I understand the question, it's really about the difference between when we are open to seeing something in ourselves that we haven't seen before and when we're not open, when we are in fact probably seeking to validate uh, some of these subconscious cells we have so that we don't have to look at them. This is the main trick of the ego, if you take my ego discourses, you know, is that the ego wants, uh, wants us to believe that we don't have to look at the ego. So uh, I would say that, <clears throat> as one example, let's say you have a situation at work where you have a supervisor who is abusing his or her power, being very difficult. And you and some co-workers get together and you're talking about the supervisor. And you might be feeling a certain unity amongst each other because you have the common experience, you're all suffering from this. I, I mean, I've gone through this myself when I, it, in a, at least one job I had. And so, um, so you might be feeling a certain unity because you have that shared experience. But the way you're talking about it is um, from a victim consciousness. You are victims of this, you can't do anything about it. You can't talk to the person, the person doesn't want to change, you can't go above the head of this person, so you feel stuck. And you are really just talking to validate each other's beliefs that you are stuck. And an alternative to this is, of course, that you are looking at yourself. You are saying, okay, maybe I can't change the supervisor. Maybe I can't get rid of the supervisor. Maybe right now I can't get another job but I can look at my personal reactions and why do I react this way to this person because if I can go get over my reactions then what's the big deal? In other words, the, the, I'm not saying that there isn't a problem here. I'm not saying that uh, the supervisor may very well be abusive, may well be difficult. I mean, su many supervisors are. Uh, but what I'm saying is that what makes this a problem for you is your reaction to the person. And if you could get over that reaction, then what would be the problem? Uh, so, so this is one measure I try to apply to myself. You know, am I, am I open to seeing something in myself, changing my reaction to the situation? And the amazing thing is that when you see it, when you change your reaction, or rather you overcome the separate self so you don't have a reaction, then in some cases, you suddenly see something you couldn't see before. Because when you have these subconscious selves that you haven't looked at, they're blocking your vision. They're sort of giving you tunnel vision. You're only focused on one particular way of looking at the situation. Don't think there is any other way to look at it. When you get rid of these selves, all of a sudden you see, oh, there might be a whole different way to uh, deal with this. It could be that you could change your job. It could be that you could talk to the supervisor. It could be you could talk to somebody else that could do something about it. Who knows in, a, in the actual situation. What I'm saying is I've often experienced when I get rid of my own reaction, I see something I didn't see before. The other thing that can happen is that the situation changes. I have experienced this several times that I was locked in a certain situation. I couldn't see how to get out of it. And when I looked you know, for a long time I was just looking at, it's the outer conditions, I can't do anything about it. But when I finally uh, reversed uh, the direction of my attention, so I looked at myself, then I saw something in myself, I, I got rid of that subconscious self, and suddenly, magically, the situation changed. I mean, it's not magic, but the situation changed. It, and, and I really, I used to have much more this sense that um, for example, with other people, that other people were locked in a certain pattern because in reality, that person was a substitute teacher for me. The person didn't know it, 
I'm not saying they knew it. I'm not saying I knew it. But the person was bringing out a reaction in me that I needed to look at. And the person was locked because the person also couldn't see any other way to react to me. But when I changed my reaction, all of a sudden it's like the person was freed up to react in a different way. Because the situation was not locked. And I know that might be a little bit, you know, focused on myself and thinking everything <laughs> relates to me. But, but uh, I still think that's a constructive way to look at your life is what is your personal um, test? What is, your pers what is it that you need to see in a situation? Now, another thing I would say is that uh, since 2002, I have been in the capacity of giving conferences and interacting with a lot of people. And they often see me as a teacher and ask me questions. And I noticed, and I know I've talked about this before, but I noticed at some point that there were people who came to me and they were asking me questions. But I realized they are not even listening for the answer. They're just waiting for when can I ask the next question. And they have endless questions. So um, a measure you can apply is, is my attention directing out so I always want these answers from outside myself? Or is my attention going inwards so that I am open to looking at something in myself? Another thing is uh, spiritual teachings. Again, I've seen many, many people over the years, uh, and I did the same thing when I was younger. Um, you are trying to understand a spiritual teaching with the intellect. So it's almost like um, you have, as I've said before, you know, the, the ego, the subconscious self, they, they create this subconscious database where you have, you know, like a, a, a old fashioned filing cabinet, you have these file folders. So in your virtual subconscious file uh, system, you have these folders and these labels and you have ideas that you categorize in a certain way. And this is what the ego and the subconscious selves do. So your ego, as I talk about in the, in the ego discourses, you know, your ego can use the spiritual teaching to keep you trapped. Because when, the, when you come across a new spiritual teaching or a new spiritual idea, the ego is always looking at which file folder can I put it in? Because if I can label that idea as something I already know, and then it just goes in that file folder and then you don't need to worry about it anymore. Now you understand it. Now you grasp it. Now it's all in place. And I can go on seeing myself the way I see myself because I've understood this spiritual teaching. I have figured it out. You know, that's what the ego essentially does. So, so the question really is, are we really looking at a spiritual teaching? Are we taking it in? Are we internalizing it? And is it changing the way we look at ourselves, the way we look at the world? Or is it just increasing our intellectual understanding? Because, you know, this is the, the curse of the modern world, is really that we think that if we intellectually understand a problem, we've solved the problem. And that may be the case with some outer things. But when it comes to our own psychology, understanding our psychology is not the same as overcoming a psychological pattern. That's why I've talked about in my uh, breakthrough videos where I talk about these subconscious selves and in many other videos where I talk about the subconscious selves. You can come to see a subconscious self, you can come to understand it intellectually, but you're not going to be free of it until you really see it, see how it limits you, and you just let the self die. Because what the self projects is, here's a problem, Kim, here's a problem you have to solve. And in order to solve it, you have to understand it. And once you understand it, you have done something about it. But that's not the case. You have to come to the point where you say, this problem that the self projects is an unreal problem. I don't have to understand it. I don't have to analyze it. Because the problem is not the problem. The problem is the self. So I have to see the self, separate the conscious you from it, and just let the self die. Another measure I would say is that 
you know, again, with, take a spiritual teaching. Many people are just trying to understand the spiritual teaching intellectually. But the real challenge is to go beyond the outer teaching, even go beyond the words of the teaching. You'll see many times you can read a spiritual teaching, you can listen to even an Ascended Master dictation, and the intellectual mind is going. You are, as I said, trying to label it, understand it, what file folder can I put it in. But what that means is you are focused on the outer teaching, the worded expression. And you are trying to understand it at the level of words. But the real purpose of a spiritual teaching is that you go beyond the words, you go beyond the outer form of the teaching, or the outer form of the teacher, such as me, uh, and you connect to the spiritual being who's giving the teaching. So if you take an Ascended Master dictation, for example, you, know, you can sit there and analyze it and categorize it, and I used to do that when I was younger, and, um, or you can intuitively go beyond this and allow yourself to have an experience of experiencing the Master's presence and being touching the hem of the master's garment, you might say. And this is the real purpose. So again, you can ask yourself this, you know, how much of your spirituality is focused on understanding intellectually and how much of it is focused on experiencing intuitively? And you can see um, spiritual people, for example, a question talks about having unity with others, and you can see spiritual people who are discussing at the level of the word, trying to understand. And sometimes you see spiritual people are talking about how, oh, their teaching and their guru is so much better than anybody else's because of all of these. But, but really, you know, the, the challenge is to intuitively connect to something beyond your own mind, First of all, your higher self and your spiritual teachers, the Ascended Masters. That's the real challenge of a spiritual teaching. So I hope these are some helpful pointers on how you can evaluate. Uh, because when you, are, when you are not seeking to transcend, you are seeking to validate. There's really, there's really not much room in between there. Either you are allowing the ego to validate what you already believe and want to believe, or you're looking at yourself and your own beliefs and reactions, willing or open to see something that you haven't seen before. 